Ron family. It's a blessing to be with you again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's uh, an exciting period still for us. Maybe for some of you, you're starting work again. Um, I am still working from home, as you can see. But uh, I am enjoying so much of this period and seeing the opportunities that Jesus is giving us. So I just want to bless you as you sit and watch this. May the Lord surround you. We just want to enter His presence even right now. Ah, thanks, Lord, for your embrace. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for that verse which says, Be still and know that I am God. I pray that for every household, the ability to come to a place of stillness in your refreshing presence this morning and under your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Even as I'm praying, I'm just seeing someone being massaged in their shoulders. If you've got tense muscles in your shoulders, I just see the Lord coming and giving you a massage in the spirit. And um, I just want to say, all tension be gone in Jesus' name. All anxiety be gone. All fear be gone. I just loose the presence of Jesus over you. Be refreshed my brother, my sister, in Jesus' name. He is so real and He's for you. Hallelujah. So, I'm still talking about powerful opportunities. These are incredible moments that we have. Let's not miss them. Um, we have, uh, yeah, just a welcome to Hebron Church Online again. Uh, last Sunday, we focused on the blessing that family is and the opportunity that we have to deepen connection with another human being. It's just an incredible thing to dig into. We touched on that powerful point uh, that we need to pursue understanding with one another, not uh, to be overly focused on correcting one another, but on understanding. That needs to be our priority. Uh, we touched on that quote by James Dobson that busyness is the biggest obstacle to family connections and relationships. We're living past each other, folks. We need to slow down, stop, and build connection. Um, we looked at Colossians 3, which talks about putting off anger and putting on equipment like compassion, kindness, humility, which is going to help our relationships. Um, we also attached uh, 10 tips on communication and in, and conflict resolution as well as a fun list of activities for families to do hopefully you got those they were connected to the YouTube video last week go and look in the notes under the YouTube video and see if you can find them if you missed them there was a tremendous response uh, to the message last Sunday and it made me realize the big need there is in this area to help people find the skills to make progress in relationships Wow. So, we're diving in. You'll notice there's another video. We managed to get the eldership team closer together, uh, again through Zoom, and just try and get some nuggets from them. So, uh, go ahead and click on that video as well if you've got the time. There's about 30 minutes of encouragement waiting for you, waiting for you there. Quick advert on Danny Silk. If you've really got a problem in this area and you are needing a whole bunch of information, um, I would encourage you to go to the Loving on Purpose website by Danny Silk and um, look for the course called Relationships 101, something I've been working through and just enjoying. And um, there's some other courses he's got and there's some great handles there uh, for uh, cultivating healthy relationships. I want to start by saying Jesus places. Maybe I'm going to throw it out as a, as a question. Do you think Jesus places a high importance on our quality of relationships? I believe he absolutely does. I think of that new commandment in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give to you, he says, that you love one another. It's the word in, in the Greek, agape. It's God's quality of love, that you agape one another. As I, Jesus says, have agape you, that you also love agape one another. And he says, by this, the next verse, 
all will know that you are my disciples. You are my disciples because you have this love, this agape love for one another. Let me remind you that agape love is God's kind of love. It's an unconditional, self-sacrificing love. And it is the standard set for all Christian followers, all Christ followers. God's kind of love is the key. It's the key to all our relationships, finding victory in all our relationships. Peter says this, remember Peter, a life changed by Jesus. And he writes in his letter, above all things have fervent agape love for one another. For love, this agape love, will cover a multitude of sin. Whatever the pile of wrongs you might hold against another or would separate you, that powerful love is able to cover it, wash it away as if it hasn't happened, and restore relationship. An amazing thing to dig into. Let me encourage you again and remind you that failure in relationships actually leads to early death. <laughs> Um, because uh, the failure, the breakdown of relationship leads to hurt, carrying of hurt, misunderstanding, offense, separation. This is what causes divorce and eventually aloneness to grow old and alone. That's why people die early. God said to Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. It's worth fighting for your relationships. Victory in our relationships leads to peace, to joy, to happiness. It lowers your blood pressure <laughs> when you're getting along, uh, when you're living without offense. Oh, it's a great thing to overcome offense. It leads to cooperation, to partnership, uh, enrichment of your life. This is what brings a couple to the point of marriage, uh, the joy of having children and even enjoying your grandchildren one day. It's worth fighting for your relationships a relationship with a spouse a relationship with a child don't forget they're going to grow up and they want to you want them to be a great friend in your life think about that relationships are worth cultivating and pursuing so i want to ask you this morning if someone had to evaluate the quality of your relationships what would they find how skilled are you at valuing and pursuing healthy connection with the people around you, especially if you're married, your spouse, your family, brothers and sisters? I want to read you that passage again out of Colossians. It's still relevant today. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 15. I have a dog in the background. This is the joy of doing these things at home. <laughs> um, so chosen by God for this new life of love. Dress in the wardrobe God has picked out for you. This is what God is saying. But sister, wear this stuff. Compassion. Kindness. Humility. I'm just going to end with those three. Um, it goes on to say, regardless of what else you put on, wear love verse 15 says let the peace of christ keep you in tune with one another in step with each other um, if you need to forgive be quick to forgive read that passage colossians 3 12 to 15. i want to give you some wisdom for victory in in relationships this morning and the first point i want to give you is this quality relationships do not just happen they don't just fall off a tree Unlike uh, Disney, Disney movies where the prince kisses Snow White and they instantly in love with each other, they get married and they live happily ever after. <laughs> That's a fairy tale. That is not reality. Reality is that quality relationships are going to take your wise and careful and patient and persistent investment. I want to use a farmer as an illustration. A farmer doesn't just walk onto a field. And decide great I'm gonna reap mealies here no he doesn't just go and reap mealies he has a whole process of careful planning and there's an investment there's money involved he's buying seed 
that he's going to sow onto that field. He's got to prepare the soil. He's got to plow. He's got to remove the weeds. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm not a farmer, so I can't tell you all the details. But if he has done all those things carefully and he has the added joy of some good rain from heaven, then three to four months later, there's going to be this beautiful, rich harvest of millies for him to harvest. He's got to pick the right time of year. They say October month is the time to sow, sow millies, if I'm right. So what's it going to take for you if you're going to have quality relationship? If you've got a problem relationship with somebody, what are you doing? to invest in that relationship what is your goal with that relationship do you, do you think God's put you in their life just to correct them I don't believe that's true God has put you in their life to love them and to be loved by them and you might have a whole bunch of offense that's gotten in the way but what is Jesus saying are you able to calm your heart and say Lord what are you saying about this so investment is necessary I want to say if it's family there's still a beautiful opportunity somebody said there's no relationship that a greater level of humility will not heal the second point I will give you don't fall into the fault finding trap <laughs> if you go and read mark chapter 7 you'll find uh, in the first few verses the Pharisees arrived to check Jesus out and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, the word says in verse 2, New King James Version, it says, they found fault. Now, some of us Christians, <laughs> uh, they walk around with a ruler and they're measuring people's lives. And they think, wow, that person's not sincere. Or, oof, that dress is too short. Or, ah, look at them, they're smokers. They think... The reason they're on earth is to correct the world. Jesus didn't come to correct the world. He came to die for us, that we through him might be, might be saved. He actually took our place, took our faults on himself. He took our sins on himself. And he made a way out for us to be reconciled with the Father. He saw the value in us. I want to, I want to challenge you, take a tip from Jesus. See, start looking for the value in people. Start looking for the good. They are much likely to become a better uh, person or the best of themselves if they think better about themselves. If you're just pointing out their faults, your son or your daughter's faults, he's just going to get a thick wall of defense and you're going to bring out the worst in him. I want to challenge you. Touch his heart with love and patience and kindness and you're going to reap a beautiful harvest from his life or her life if you find you're in that place where you are constantly critical and fault finding i've been there as a father i've had to change go to jesus acknowledge that fault ask him to change you first ask somebody close to you am i critical am i judgmental yeah they, and, and listen to what they've got to say ask them if you're loving and kind and patient that's the stuff you want to practice. Start looking for the good and value in others and pointing it out to them. All right, last point I want to make is discern the fake from the real. <laughs> there, on, on, on social media today, there is an opportunity for relational connection. And um, you, as a young person maybe, even as someone on Facebook, um, you can feel like you've got connection with a whole bunch of followers. It's what we call a virtual connection. This, today, the word virtual uh, is, is almost synonymous with uh, whatever's online. And uh, it's almost become the preferred form at times for relationship. It's not uncommon to walk into a room and find everybody looking at their cell phones and ignoring the real humans in the room. It's kind of crazy, but this is where we find ourselves in society. Can I remind you that the word virtual actually means almost or nearly as described, but not completely according to strict definition. It means not physically existing as such, but, so let me just read that again, not physically existing as such, but um, made by software to appear to be so. 
<laughs> Let me give you a, an example of this. How many of you would like some virtual biltong? Now, <laughs> you're seeing the representation of this biltong on TV right now, but I'm tasting the real. Mm. And this buy lacquer. For those of you who don't know what biltong is, it's dried salted meat. We love it as South Africans. I want to challenge you. Discern the fake from the real. Have you got real connection with real people? Or are you falling into this trap of having a bunch of followers but no real connection? It's going to take some discussion as families to talk about this because there's a real trap for us to do this and ignore the opportunities to build real connection around us. It's going to take some hard work. It's going to take some prayer. It's going to take some focus. And I think we've actually got a real epidemic in this area. <laughs> More than the virus. Let's not allow the representation created online to reduce our real connections with people. To, with, sorry, with real people. A healthy family, let me remind you, plays together. Fun is a great way. To build bonds and connection with each other and it paves the way uh, for relationship building where you can face some of the deeper issues you can't just dive into the deeper issues if you haven't even started on fun or relaxing issues or, 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 or lighter issues I heard a great illustration if you had to hold a tissue one end of a tissue in your hand and the other person you want a connection with holding the other end of that tissue and you try to encourage them in a certain direction that tissue would tear easily that's an example of a weak connection this is from Danny Silk but if you had taken time to to tie your hands together with several strings um, they, they would become a stronger bond of influence uh, on each other's life but notice when there's a strong bond you're allowing that relationship to pull you as well there's a give and take in a quality relationship so don't just chase the likes chase real relationships invest in real relationships um, avoid the fault finding trap uh, i want to end with this thought let's jump back to that word compassion Meditate on that word a little bit. What does it mean to have compassion? Jesus was moved with compassion. That doesn't just that wasn't just a warm, happy feeling in his heart. It actually led him to take certain action which met the needs of others. And by doing that, he built awe and trust in his relationships with many. And I want to challenge you. Be moved with compassion, moved to take action, moved to be thoughtful and ask Jesus what is it going to take to invest in this relationship how, help me to understand this person better help me to find the way to build a stronger bond and honor you and bring you glory by the quality of relationship I have found the patience and love to build I want to end just by praying grace again over you and over your relationships I know uh, many of you are sitting with hurting hearts and hurting relationships and I just want to say Jesus is big enough for you. He's got the wisdom for you. Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this hour uh, of worship and, and, and engagement in your word this morning. Will you come again into our homes, into our families, into our hearts, into our relationships and bring grace, bring your kingdom. We bring our hearts and our relationships into your presence and ask you, Lord, for your influence, for your wisdom. And I release that grace on my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. God bless you till we meet again. Amen.